Alright, I guess let's listen to some tapes. I got a lot of tapes now, apparently.
No. Tactical communication is the linchpin of what we do. What if we were to ban the use of the Congo? Insufficient. First, there is no guarantee that only the Kikongo string is here. Second, there is the matter of how the parasites lay their eggs. Before they can copulate, they must be exposed to the pronunciation of a specific language for a period of time. Like a container filling with water. But the duration between when the container is full and when the copulation actually begins varies from case to case. In other words, even if the infected stops speaking as a countermeasure, it may already be too late. The only true solution is to prevent copulation through the bombardia, or by physically removing the affected tissue. Do any anti-parasitics work? It sounds as though you have already tried. Yeah. We tried everyone there is, and nothing. I have yet to find a medicine that can remove the parasites. At best, it temporarily covers their ears. Why is that? Because the parasites are companions to us. To remove them inevitably harms the host. Companions. More than you think. And this is why the human immune system cannot eliminate them. Hmm. That's really insane. Well, and I just noticed I can send people out on missions now, so when I get some big, big GMP coming back in. And thank God everybody else is alive. Well, I saved some people. Better than nothing. We've inoculated the staff with Wolbachia to keep them from becoming symptomatic. Hmm. That should also contain the infection. How did this happen in the first place? It has to have been a cypher spy within our ranks. If this is so, then why the Kakango strain? If their intent was to wipe you out. Skullface said the remaining English parasite was close to the boss. If this latest strain was his doing, he wouldn't have tipped his hand. It is possible someone brought eggs onto the base without knowing stuck to their shoes, clothing. Well, that makes the most sense to me. Then where did the eggs come from? You mentioned that your boss visited Nzoya Badiopulu. Sure, but his gears disinfected immediately upon return. Hmm. Then he was not the carrier. And not just the boss. All staff dispatched to high-risk regions were quarantined on the flight back. When the symptoms first appeared, we checked and disinfected all equipment used up to that point. Any and all prisoners, soldiers, materials, and animals extracted during missions were also quarantined. So, that just leaves. I have seen children around here. Where are they from? All over. Some were being held hostage at a mine. Then there were the troublemakers at Guala Yamasa. Guala Yamasa? Yeah. Their clothes, their things. Did you burn them? They're just kids. We couldn't. And besides, not one of them's shown symptoms. The parasites don't infect prepubescent hosts. Their vocal cords are not fully developed. Well, if infection doesn't occur in children, it is possible they carried eggs on their clothes, and the infection spread from them. Check the kid's stuff. No oh, shit. I doubt there is any trace left by now. But if there is, some of those kids must be close to hitting puberty. How could we have missed this? Huh. It's insane. The name Wala Yamasa got quite a reaction from you. I'm guessing that Kakongo strain was released in that village. Cypher used that region to experiment with focal core parasite transmission. The Kakongo strain. The settlements around the refinery upstream of Buwala Yamasa were the proving grounds. They would infect one villager and record transmission speed. Dangerous work. If they failed to contain the infection, it would slip into the surrounding regions. At which point the world found out about the parasites, making them useless as a 
weapon. Incredible they'd risk such a thing. The death fight was densely populated too. A terrible place for such experiments. No doubt. They thought burning everything would wipe away all traces. The settlements were covered in oil anyway. Who would wonder if one day they caught fire? And so it did. They burned it all. Living and dead. That remains. But they miscalculated. Transmission speed was far faster than anticipated. It may have been the temperature, or hygiene standards, or perhaps the parasites reacted quickly to Kikongo. Whatever the reason, nearly all villages were swiftly infected, and the settlements reduced to mounds of corpses. Making matters worse, the dry season was ending. When it came time to burn the village, the Moneni River had swelled. Many of the bodies were waterlogged, meaning they didn't burn completely. The corpses still contained viable eggs, and the larvae washed downstream. And when the people downstream drank that water, that marked the end for Bwala Yamasa. I learned all of this at the mansion. I warned him of the risk of eggs getting out, and... We are prepared for any eventuality. I get it. Mm. Putting the oil field back online, the oil leaks insane. They plan to pollute the river, prevent the spread of infection. But the oil flow was stopped, and downstream the people of Masa Village started using the water again. The PF soldiers deployed at the village were locals, spoke in Congo. They were infected, and the kids survived. I've heard enough. And who stopped the flow of oil? Don't. We did. <sighs> that confirms it. The source of the Kikongo strain infection was Masa Village. And the children brought it here. It is no one's fault. Please select a mission. There is no blame to be cast. That's intense. The parasites. They were tested in other regions. They have 